Now we are asked to read Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1 to 14. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenlies in Christ, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of sons, by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he had abounded to us, towards us, in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to the good pleasure wherewith, which, sorry, he had purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom also, in whom he also trusted, after that he heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that he believed, he was sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. We have entered into some wonderful things. Wonderful things. Of all the books that have been written, John said, if all the if all the things that Jesus did and said were to be recorded in books, the world couldn't contain the books that should be written there. I went to a college, I visited, let me say, I visited this college in Dublin, Ireland, Trinity College. And they have one of the biggest libraries you could see. You look down and it's books. You look books, books, books. And you know what gripped me then? All of these books couldn't contain 
things about Jesus Christ. It is grand to be a Christian. I'm not ashamed of being a Christian. I am thankful. So thankful. We are going to speak this evening about the heart of God. The heart of God has been revealed. Has been revealed. I could remember the first time I said to my fiance before we got married, you know, I love you. What do you think happened? What do you think happened when I told her that? She was happy. <laughs> Let me ask a young lady. Wait, what happened? She said, I love you. Hey, tears start to fall. There was something inside that caused tears to fall. God, in His grace, in His love towards you and I, is saying, Listen, I want you to pause. I am going to reveal my thoughts about you before the foundation of the world. It's not when after you were born, it's not when your parents were born or your grandparents, your great, great, great grandparents, before there was nothing, nothing existed. God taught about you and God talked about me. And God says, I'm going to let you know what I was thinking way back in eternity. That I sat, the God had sat and counseled one with another how they are going to bless us and how he's going to, how they are going to bring us into blessing. Now, in this book of Ephesians, no, listen. We, we have another couple here, but it's based on the lesson of it. So, Take some notes. Ephesus means full purpose. I'll say it one more time. Ephesus means full purpose. And the Apostle Paul, when he got this revelation, he began with Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings and heavenly in Christ Jesus? It gripped him and he began with worship, he began with praise, he began with thanksgiving. Now, in that verse, captures for us some things about our blessings. Now, if I break up this verse, I'll break it up like this Blessed be the God and Father. The source of all blessings is the Father. Okay? Then he says, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. It is telling us the character of all blessings. They are spiritual. The source is the Father. The character of it is spiritual. It means I cannot hold on to it. But faith lay holds upon it. Faith is the substance or the evidence of things not seen. But then it tells us where the realm of our blessings or the sphere is heavenly. It's not earthly blessings. It tells us about the base. Or the foundations of our blessing is in Christ. They are in Christ. I tell you. They are secure. Well secure. And you ask, when is the beginning of these blessings? When I came into it, the beginning began in eternity past. We in eternity past. And how do I put it? I'll use the word. The final end is that we should be holy 
blameless before God. Amen. Amen. We are going to open this up. You know, I had this up. Sure enough. <laughs> no. The good pleasure of his will. We are going to take up the mystery of his will. And we are going to take up the promise of his will. Three different things. The first one I'm going to take up now, chapter one in the book of Ephesians is the revelation of the heart of divine persons for Christ and the assembly. I'm going to repeat because I'm going to ask questions after. The revelation, chapter one give us the revelation of the heart of divine persons for Christ and the assembly. Chapter 2 is the manifestation of the heart of the chapter 3 is the manifestation of the counsel of God to men, to angels and men. And chapter 4 to 6 is the display of that counsel to us. That's the book of Ephesians. What we are going to take up the first four things. The mystery of his will, the counsel of his will, and the good pleasure of his will. No, I want you to know this. God has Selected, God has chosen you for blessing. You must ask him why. Why you chose me to be blessed? Why you chose me to be blessed? And God is going to answer. He's going to say, because I am God. I can do as I please. Can the clear say to the potter, why you make me like this? Have not the pot, potter power over the clay? God can do as he please. So God says, I have selected you and I have predestinated you. No, big words. What selection means, God has secured the person. Predestination means I have secured the blessing. So God has secured the person and he secured the blessing for the person. So now what is, what is the mystery? What is the good pleasure of his will? God, good pleasure is this. God wants you to be like his son. God wants you just to be, he wants you to be like the Lord Jesus Christ. And God has chosen you indeed for this. No, sonship, let me explain this. We, he says we have been chosen. Let me read it, please. Verse 5. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of sons. No, it's not sons and daughters here. Sonship in the scripture is a position. is a place of dignity. is a place of honor that God has given to every one of us he has chosen. No, it's God's desire and it's his pleasure and his heart is saying, listen, I want every one of you just to be like my son. On the banks of the Jordan, the father looked down on the Lord Jesus Christ and says, thou art my beloved son in whom I have found all my delight. It said of the Lord Jesus Christ at the age of 12, wish not I must be about my father's business? His delight was to do the Father's will. He also, he also states, he says, I always do those things that please the Father. 
and my meat and my drink is to do the will of him that sent me. In Garden of Gethsemane, he says, not my will, but thy will be done. Likewise, it tells us, he wrote, he said in John's gospel, chapter 14 and verse 31, he said, listen, that the world may know that I love the Father. That is what sonship is. God has sent us. God has selected us to be like his son. And he says the same spirit that was in the son, he has placed in every one of us. I want you to turn to that verse. The book of Galatians. And chapter 4. Verse 6 and 7. Who's reading that for us? Volunteer. Go ahead. Six and seven. Give me some light. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out out of glory. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Very good. Book of Romans, chapter 8. Verse 29. 28 and 29. We stand up over there to read. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to conform. To the image of his son, that he might be the first one among many friends. Very good. Thank you very much. Now, we are going to explain what sonship is the good pleasure of the spirit. It's God's desire, it's God's pleasure to have many sons like the Lord Jesus Christ. And now God is showing to us what sonship is. If I want to understand good sonship, I look at the son. I saw the life that he lived. I saw the path that he took. And I realized, look, God is saying, this is what be like in my path. And this is why I have chosen you that Christ may be reproducing us. So God says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give you the spirit that was in my son. And this spirit in us is going to speak and to cry just like the spirit that was in the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, no, the father has given us the spirit of his son. Why? To enjoy indeed the father with the son. And God says, this is what I want to do. And John in the epistle of John says that you may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the father and the son. And John says, I wrote these things unto you that your joy may be full. Until... I'm telling you this, until you realize how valuable you are to God and what dignity God has placed upon you and the place of blessing into which you have been brought. You are not really starting to live Christianity. I was privileged. I was in London and I decided I'm going to see the queen. And I took myself and some brothers who decided we're going to Buckingham Palace. Now we have to walk at least two miles down the street to get there. And when I got there, there people all over the place. And this sentry is there standing up with a gun. The gate is closed. And you know, I look around and I say, boy, <laughs> you're a real joker, you know. Walk all these miles to see a man standing up in the gun. I couldn't get in the palace. I couldn't get in the palace. 
But when it comes to God's house, God said, listen, this is no door coming to no door. No key. I am bringing you in. And I'm bringing you in like my son. So God tells us now in the book of Romans, not only in the book of Galatians, I have placed the spirit that was in Jesus in us. Oh, that's our blessing. But he says, I've done more. I am now conforming you, Romans chapter 8, to the image of my son, that he may be the firstborn amongst many brethren. Now, firstborn means he takes the number one place because he is the son. He is the eternal son. And he became a man. And God says, I want to see many like him. So when you believe you are going to be a Christian and you're going to be a son and God indeed is going to put you in this place of sonship. You know what it tells us in the book of Hebrews chapter 12? Every son God receives, he chastens, he whips, he disciplines because he says, I want you to be like my son. So no son is going to get away with anything. So don't believe you are going to take Christian position and live as you like. It's not true. It won't happen. Indeed, God says, I am going to do the spanking when my son was young, you see. He was behaving badly. And I took him out to me. Four years old, you know. <laughs> Give him some. <laughs> you know, he got a little older. He says, Daddy, you can remember when you used to spank me here? But then, he's much bigger than me. He met Patrick. Like <laughs> you could imagine me holding him down. Eh? Who's going to spank me? Who's going to spank you? God. God says, I am going to discipline you. I am going to let you know my purpose and my desire is to conform you to the image of my son. Don't believe you are going to get away with anything. It won't happen. God says our fathers discipline us for their profit, but God for our benefit, that we may be partakers of his holiness. So God is saying, I, the good pleasure of my will is that you are a son of God. <laughs> hey, I tell you, I feel good about that. I'm a son of God. I was in England. And this is when Prince Charles uh, was behaving badly. <laughs> behaving badly. Some of the young people know that one, but he behaved very badly. And uh, he and Lady Diana, the marriage came to nothing. So I was in a home. Of a brother and sister. I have to be careful of our sins, you see. They were having high tea, high tea. And uh, on this side, I had some, a couple of spoons and forks and all here and all here. I know nothing about it. So I decide I'm going to watch what they, what they do and I'll follow. So they brought a dish and everybody picked up a spoon from there. So I picked up a spoon. They pick up the dish of them too. But when they came to the tea, they had some little you know, teacups, and everybody had it came out like this. <laughs> so I says, I, I says, Well, it looked funny to me. So I says, ah, forget this trouble. They said, No, no, no. But Brian, you have to push out the pinky. So it looked like the English, you see. So in the conversation, I says, Prince Philip. Prince Charles, sorry, is a very bad boy. I get a whip in that day. It says, it's not him. Not him. He is, he is upright. It's, it's Lady Diana. I said, no, no, I keep my mouth shut after that. But let me tell you this. We're in Canada, so I could speak now. <laughs> he was very bad. He, he was not really representing 
the queen. His behavior was a disgrace to the throne. And being a son of the queen, indeed, there is certain protocol, there's certain behavior that should characterize him. Well, the same comes with the sons of God. As sons, you are representatives of Christ. And God, what a privilege that God has chosen you to be a son and put his spirit in you and says, I'm going to conform you to the image of my son. So he says, sons, don't be, don't be discouraged. Don't let, the, don't lose faith when you are disciplined and God taking you to some deep waters. All it is, is conforming you more to the image of his son. That's the mystery. Sorry, the good pleasure of his world. Now, I ask a sister, are you a son? Yes, you are. This is not male and female, he said. Sonship is a position. Sonship is a place of honor and dignity God has given to us. So there is no brother and sister when it comes to sonship. Sonship is God is going to have little Jesus all over the universe. And he begins with us. Say amen. amen. Son of God. What a name. That's verse 5. Verse 9 and 10. We have. We have the mystery of his will. No. A mystery is a secret that is hidden. It's not mysterious. And let us turn to chapter three, and and you will see what it means. Chapter three of the same book. He says, "If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, one, how that by revelation, sorry, hold on, but how by revelation." He made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in a few words, whereby he may, whereby when he read, he may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other age was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. The book of Romans, chapter 16. And reading verse 25. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. But now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. One more, the book of Colossians. Colossians and chapter 1. And verse 25, wherefore I am, I am made a minister according to the dispensation of the grace which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to the saints to whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Listen, I tell you sometimes, I feel I could kiss this book. It's so wonderful. So wonderful. Wonderful. I am a son of God. Let that, let that sink in a little bit. You are selected to represent, to reflect Christ. 
What a privilege. And God says, you know what? I'm going to do. I'm going to do this with you. All right? I am going to show you the mystery of my will. God says, the a day is coming. It is called the world to come. Some call it the millennial reign of Christ. Some call it the thousand year reign of Christ. We are going to be placed on display. And God is saying to us in verse 9, let me read it. Verse 9, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to the good pleasure, which he had, according to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are in earth. And the day is coming that if I stand up for Christ now, I will be rewarded in this day. Let me explain this. I am going to heaven because Jesus died. I am going to heaven because Jesus died and my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life and I accepted him as my Lord and personal Savior. And my Bible tells me if I believe, I shall be saved. And the Spirit of God comes in and bear witness with my spirit that I am a child of God. So I'm going to heaven. I am sure of going to heaven. On what grounds? Because Jesus died. But then you ask yourself, why should I be faithful? Why should I live for Christ now and I'm going to heaven? Why should I be committed? Why should I reflect this wonderful and deep person who bled and died for me? Why? You know why? There's a day coming. God is going to reward every Christian for his faithfulness. Faithfulness to him. Not to, not to some church. Not to some people. Faithfulness to his word. Because man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeded out of his mouth. So listen, there is sometimes, I may sound cruel, but please forgive me. Sometimes it may be good that you don't hear God's word. Because if you hear it, you are responsible. You are responsible because God says no. In this day, you know what God is going to do? God is going to help all things in heaven and all things on earth under the headship of Christ. I want to explain and make it simple. The world to come now is a world that will be centered around Christ. We have Mr. Trudeau here. We have Mr. Biden. And England is trying to get a prime minister. We have men in, in office who we have to respect because the government that be ordained of God. But God is saying, I am bringing in a day that every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And God, you know what God said to him? In Psalm 2, he is going to rise. And God said, ask me and I'll give you the heathen for your inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for your possession. No, what God is going to do, God is going to put everything into the hands of Christ. But no, what is he going to do with us in association with Christ? You know what Paul is telling us? In that day, we are going to come out to rule and reign with Christ. We are coming out on display. God is going to show us off to this universe. And God says, listen. He is waiting for that day, you know. He is waiting for that day. But we don't have to wait until that day comes. If people are not the Bible, people stop. Just read them. They turn a nice cathedral in England into a apartment building, a condo. The churches are being empty. You know why? They have lost sight. That we are born from above, heavenly men by birth, 
who wants to citizens of earth? You are not from here. You are from heaven. And God has sent you here as ambassadors for him. And indeed, he says, what kind of ambassador is this? He's getting involved in everything here. You are God representatives on earth. You know, I have a, a telescope home, and I like looking at Saturn, Mars, Jupiter, Neptune. I could see the moons around Neptune. But now, since the web have gone out and sending us back spectacular pictures, I realized what I had was trash. Well, and I could enjoy it. But you know what it brings to me? All that expense to be put into the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we, we, the ring, along with me. You know, the scripture says, His glory shall cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Go down to the United Nations in New York City and see the Isaiah War. There will be the weapons of war into farming tools taken from the book of Isaiah. A day is coming when all the lawlessness on this earth will be put down. There will be a little bit of heaven here on earth. But at this time, this period, God is securing young men, young ladies, old folks, young folks, mid-age, indeed to display them in a day to come. And I want to turn to that verse in the book of Ephesians chapter 2 and verse, and verse 7 and verse 10. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. What day that will be? That's the day of display. We are going to be placed on display. Do you know my, my daughter went to see Serena uh, at the last match? You see, she got free tickets. She said, Daddy, you want to come? I said, I'm not going. Anyway, she got a friend to go with her. And she says it was such a tremendous occasion because she decided she's going to retire. So everybody thought she was going to lose the, lose the first match. And all the dignitaries came to send her off in all oh, man in, 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 in a blaze of glory. But she won the match. She won the match. So I said to her, you had ring seat? You had front court? She said, no. Way up in the back. Way up in the back. There are Christians who are going to be way up in the back in the day of this world. They'll have no front seat. You know why? Because I wasn't faithful. I wasn't committed. I wasn't a serious Christian. I didn't realize I was a to live like that. So let me explain. The mystery of his will is this. God is going to bring in a thousand year reign of Christ. Everything will be placed into the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. He will rule and reign. Everything will be subject to him. And we will administrate with Christ. That's the mystery of this world. Now, let's talk about the concept. Chapter 1, verse 11. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. No, what God is going to do? God is going to 
take possession of what he has given to Christ to us. I want to explain this very simply. No, when Christ died, he got the title deed to the universe. It's like a person going to buy a house. Okay. When you go to the lawyer, I don't know how you do it in Canada, but I'll see how you do it in America. You're going to buy a house. And the seller and the buyer, they have the lawyers. And they're going to sign over the house to the buyer. And the buyer is given a deed. A deed is transferred to the buyer. So he has the deed. But he hasn't taken possession yet of the house. He hasn't gone in to live in the house. So what God has done, the Lord Jesus had the title deed to the universe. And he says one day, he's going to take possession of what is his. But right now, he is rejected. He is despised. He was sent back to heaven. We will not have this man to reign over us. And no, I recognize. I have made a decision for my rejected Lord. But what, he is, what God is going to do, God says, look at the vast expanse. I am going to put you in and give it to you that you will enjoy what I am enjoying that. Do you want that? Yeah. Do you want that? Sure, I want that. But no, you ask. This is something that is future. Something that is future. No. God has given us a foretaste of what shall be ours. So the earnest of the spirit is given as a guarantee, a guarantor, that I will be, I will get to glory. But he also brings a present possession, a present enjoyment. No, I don't have to wait till I get to heaven to enjoy what God has done for me. No, I can enjoy it. No. And ultimately, when it comes. So the spirit of God is like when they, the spies went in to, to the land of Canaan. And they brought back some grapes. The grapes on two men's shoulders. Indeed, the grapes were so large that they brought it back. And he says, these are the fruits of the land. They enjoy, indeed, fruits of the land before they got there. That is what God has done. God is saying to me, I want you to dwell upon that. I want you to dwell upon what you are in Christ. I want you to dwell upon what I am going to do for you in the world to come. Indeed, I want you to dwell upon the fact I am bringing you into all of it. I'm not sharing. I am bringing you into all my delight in the Son of God and all that I've given to him. I will tell you this. When you look at Solomon, Solomon he was glorious. You know what he said? The Lord Jesus says, I pray that I'm Solomon. <laughs> I tell you, hey, listen, wouldn't you be a Christian? I trust everyone who knew the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior and the glory that the Lord is at. What a grand take with you. Son of God, what you are. You know, we had this brother came down to St. Kitts visiting me, you see. And, um, a guy said to me, hey, what a white man doing in your, in, in your bus? I said, that's my brother. He said, not your blood brother. I said, yes, my blood brother. Say, your blood brother? Yes. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> he, got quiet. he got quiet. He got quiet. That is reality, brethren. We are one in Christ. And God has brought us in into such a wonderful family. Listen, I will tell you, I have traveled the world. I've gone to Africa. I'm in Europe. I'm in Poland. I'm in Switzerland. I, I, oh, man. I've been all over the place. And do you know, 
sometimes have, I, I think it's about, so I, listen, I've slept in so many beds. Slept in so many, I tell you, unbelievable. One day I was going to Newcastle in England and a sister says, they says, someone is coming to pick me up at the train station. I came to the train station and I'm waiting for train left. Everyone on the platform left. I said, what happened? There was a lady down at the other end and she's walking up and down the platform. So I prayed and said, Lord, should I speak to this lady? So when she's passing, I says, um, you, you are waiting for someone? She says, yes. I'm waiting for Brian Bakke. I says, I am him. The lady started to laugh. So I, I wake him to get the joke, you see. <laughs> she says, you know what they told me? You were six feet tall and 300 pounds. <laughs> so she couldn't believe. I says, I've never been six feet in my life. And I've never been 300, over 300 pounds. So the price I've gotten is probably 140 something. We had a big laugh. Never met the lady in my life. But we had a bond. We know Christ. And we came to know each other. We had laughter and went all over the place. This is the fellowship we have. We are sons. We are going to reign and rule with Christ in a day to come. Let me say this in closing. There is two sides to the world to come. There is the earthly side and there is the heavenly side. Right now, the Lord is securing those for the heavenly side of the kingdom. We are heavenly people living here on earth, simple zones of heaven. When you think of that, he says, what do you want? A son of God going to rule and reign with Christ. And all that God has, we are going to come to the other. And God says, listen, I sent the son to testify about this. No, a will could be changed. A will could be changed. But there's a, there's a time a will cannot be changed. What time is that? A will can be changed. Anytime. But some thing make it final. What's that? Yeah. yeah. Imagine this is what God has done. Jesus testified that what God is going to do. And the one who testified of the will died so it could be enforced and rose again from the dead that we may enjoy. It is grand to be a Christian. And not shall not. The good pleasure of his will is what? Nobody has a point in The mystery of his will is not. And the counsel of it now have come to the option to point me to turning the things that are so nice and not to be very much.
We are having some. We are going to have some tricky questions. Okay, just ponder them. Now, what is sonship? What is sonship? Okay. Uh, so the question was, what is sonship? Uh, sonship is a position, and it's a position that he gives to everyone who he makes according to his son, like his son. Spirit of God is none of you. Okay? But if any man have, if the Spirit of God dwells in him, he belongs to God. But the Spirit of Christ means that God is reproducing Christ in us. Christ like Spirit. No. 
the mystery of his will is when when it is going to be manifested it's when he is going to show us to the, the earth the whole world so All right. because there's two coming you see there's the rapture and there is when he comes back with us so you could clap in now There is a process. We are okay. We are something. I'm coming over to the next one. We are sons, okay? We are sons. But there is a process that the father is doing to enhance morally that I may display this position of sonship, what the father is doing. Should I repeat that question again? Okay, I'll break it down a little more simple. We are sons. And remember what they said about sonship. Remember what they said? What is sonship? Add some more. Very good. Add a little more. Never forget the position of honor, of dignity that God has given you. Don't lower yourself. Remember who you are. A son, you have been brought into a position of honor and dignity. Lower it for no one. No, the question is this. I am a son. Positionally, I cannot change. But sometimes in my behavior, I don't reflect that I am. So what God has to do? Inform us to the image of the sun. Amen. 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 Another round of applause. Put that out of a hat. <laughs> it was like a rabbit. <laughs> oh, hey, listen. I want you to know these are God thoughts about you. Don't lower yourself to man's standards. Raise yourself to God's standards and realize God has chosen you to be like his son. The next question is this. How am I going to be brought into this blessing? Notes. <laughs> How am I going to be brought into this blessings? Not sonship. We are sons. Okay. But we are looking now at the, the council of his will. How am I going to be brought into that? No 
clap, don't clap. I'm not sure. I'm sure either. The question is this. Look at the Council of his will. I explain what the Council of his will is. Now think about your father and uh, your grandpa and you will begin the answer. Think about your grandpa. <laughs> the constant of his will. <laughs> He's a venture priest. <laughs> the council of his will. Okay, it's, it's, it's an inheritance God has for every one of us. And the thing is, is that this inheritance can be enjoyed now and ultimately in a day to come. And this is what God has done with each one of us. You have, my parents have left nothing for me. Okay. But what I have is going to last throughout the countless ages of eternity. That's why God said in the book of Peter that God has not begotten us. He has begotten us again unto a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To an inheritance, incorruptible, undefiled, reserved in heaven for us. We are kept for it and it is kept for us. will not be lost. And this is the blessings we have. And walk around in the dignity of this. Don't walk around like you're some pauper. You have nothing. And I'm telling you this. Pursue your education. Pursue your disciplines. But all of that is going to stay right here. No one is going up there as a doctor, as a PhD, as a nurse, as a lawyer. None of that. So there's what God wants you to realize is there is something we can enjoy now and ready to hold upon. Now, I've been asking you some questions. I've kept you here too long. Now, ask me some questions. So if they don't understand anything, please, here I am. I have four more questions to ask. There was a doctor in the Bible. His name was what was his name? Luke. And Paul called him a beloved physician. He loved him. So realize I am a prisoner for Christ. I am an engineer for Christ. I'm a plumber for Christ. I'm a physician for Christ. That's the goal. The goal is we want to live comfortably. We want to have a car. We want to have a home. I would like to get married. I would like to have a husband. I would like to have a wife. All of these things are legitimate. But I tell you, if you keep these three things in mind, the good pleasure of his will, what you are, it is going to help you in to the day's life. It is going to help you to maintain a level of awareness of who you are and who you are representing. Likewise, the mystery of his will. I may not win. I may not come first. I may not have a lot of things in this life. But it tells me in when this comes, and God brings me in. I rule and reign with Christ. Things that people glory in. 
we realized it was nothing but vanity and vexation of spirit. And then you come here. He says, it's a good thing I will cook this. So now I have friends. I have friends who are very educated, very rich. They give up their substance. And you know something? They don't blow their trumpet. Keep to the work. Keep to the work. I'll say this. We were putting up a building, a hall in St. Kitts. And we needed money. We needed money. And we went before the Lord. We fasted and prayed. We asked the Lord for 50,000 euros. We fasted the Monday, the Tuesday, the Wednesday, the Thursday, the Friday, two brothers every day. On Saturday night, a brother called me and says, You would not believe it. Say what can I do? Someone sent a substantial gift. Say for me. Say no for the belief. Exactly. The secret is this. When you want something for the glory of God, he's going to give it to you. I want to repeat this again. When you want something for the glory of God, he is going to give it to you. But if you want it to, con to consume on your loss, no. So keep this in mind. Maintain your honor. Maintain your dignity. Maintain your position. Remember in case. That's the time. <laughs> so G is sending a message to me. <laughs> Thank you, G. Hey, let's close now with a prayer. Any more questions before? Blessed Father in God, we thank you and praise you for your Son, the Lord Jesus. We bless your name now. And trust, blessed God, that what thou hast shared with us will fall upon good ground. Help everyone in this room to know what a blessing you have secured for us in Christ. It has revealed your heart to us. What you taught of, what you taught of way back in eternity past, that we should be like your son, that we should be brought to glory, that we should rule and reign with him. And you will put us in possession, indeed, of what you have secured for us in Christ. Oh God, we pray. Give us appetites for these things. And help us to know, blessed God, a divine person has come, the Holy Spirit, to indwell us, that we may have a present enjoyment of all that you have secured for us. And blessed God, we pray, cause that thy word will fall upon good ground, that it will bring forth fruit, to the honor, praise, and glory of our Savior and Lord. We ask, cause that our hearts may burn within us while we share these things by the way. Dismiss us now with thy choicest blessings. We give thee thanks. Savior's really precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much.